What is up homies, my name is Felix and today I am going to be bringing you guys a video that has been requested quite a little bit. Basically today I'm going to be showing you guys how to sample like older songs or you know maybe newer songs or maybe literally anything you want. I'm basically just going to be showing you how to sample using kind of a little combination of LMS and Audacity but mostly Audacity to be honest because the one thing with LMS that kind of really holds it back as a you know music production program is the fact that the sampling you know capabilities are not really that good there's really no way to sample inside of LMS that is practical because there's no way to change the speed of your sample and there's not really a super effective way to change the pitch of your sample either so that's why I'm gonna be using audacity for this one for the you know sampling portion of it so before we get started you guys should check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud which will both be down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I've produced and my beat store and my discord and all that stuff if you want to go check it out it'll be down there and yeah now let's get into this video so we are going to put this bad boy on hold for a second and we're gonna bring up audacity so the first thing that you want to do with audacity is you know obviously open the program but then you want to hit control shift I and then control shift I will bring up a little window like this and in this window uh, you have to find wherever all your samples are or whatever you know your downloads or whatever the song that you're trying to sample is at you're gonna go to that folder and then you're going to locate it and for this one I'm gonna be using a little song that you guys probably know pretty well most people probably know pretty well the song is September by Earth Wind and Fire and I was thinking that probably the best way to do this so that I don't get copyrighted or anything is to pitch this down beforehand because I think when you pitch it down so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this little area here to make sure this is selected then go to effect and then go to change pitch and now once you're in change pitch it'll probably look something like this what we want to do is we want to pitch it you know you can either do down or up it doesn't really matter so yeah I'm gonna pitch it down a little bit I'm gonna pitch it to C all right so that's fine and the part that I want to sample actually is this beginning part right here and the thing that I see a lot of people have trouble with when sampling and something that I struggled with myself when I started sampling is not being able to tell like when you should start the you know chop of your sample and when you should end it so basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a little piece out of this and just exporting that and then bring it into LMS but it's important to know where your sample should stop and start because if you don't know where it stops and starts it's gonna be off when it's inside LMS because the you know counts when it goes one two three four one two three four is gonna be off from inside of LMS so you want it to be clean and you want to get like a perfect one two three four count so if I were to play this some of you will be able to hear you know where the one two three four is but I'm gonna just say it out loud for you guys so and then it cuts off right there so if you can figure out the counts for the song you'll probably be fine and if you notice I said one two three four four times and four times four is 16 and when you're inside LMS right you usually will have a sample that's either you know four bars or eight bars or 16 or something along those lines you usually never have like a 12 bar sample because it doesn't fit right so 16 fits in really well so if I were to count this out and it was one two three four you know three times that would be 12 so I would want to cut it an extra four counts after that so you want to make sure that you either have one two three four or, you know just one time which it probably won't be or you know two times or four times that's probably a good general rule to have for this also another thing you can do is if there's snares in the beat in the part that you want to sample you can count out the snares so I'm gonna count every time that there's a snare hit and basically however many times I count is gonna be like essentially how many bars the sample will have one two three four five six seven eight and then you know that right here is where you would cut it off because if you're using the you know method of snares as referencing you want to cut it off before the ninth snare hits and after the eighth snare hits so yeah that's one way you can do that as well but for me as I said I want to just sample this first part and this doesn't have any snares or anything but what we're gonna do is we're going to left click we can do a little bit before because we can always chop out more if we need to and then we're going to click and drag until we get to right before here because remember this is where I counted to so right here is what we have and now you can do control X 
or command X if you're on uh, Mac or whatever and now make sure you click off of it like click down here in this gray space and now do control V and now this will bring in a new little thingy and unless you have more of this that you want to sample you can just click here and delete it because this is the new sample that we're gonna be working with now that we have this we can you know clean it up a little bit so we can zoom in and now click here and go like that and then you can just do delete and now we can go really zoomed in at the end here because there's this little part that's gonna bug me because I'm a perfectionist about that stuff. So just select it and then delete again. And now we can go to the beginning and it looks pretty clean here. So now this is pretty much our sample and if you wanted to change the speed you could go to effect and then don't go change speed just go to change tempo because change speed will change the pitch and we don't want to change the pitch because we already did that we want to just change the tempo a little bit so I'm gonna go like that maybe and now this will make it a little bit faster and it'll sound like this So yeah, that's what you can do if you want to change the speed a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is file and then just export this and then we'll bring it into LMS. All right, so we are now inside of LMS. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to find wherever we save the sample to. So, so you can probably go to my home and then figure out, you know, where your sample is from there. Mine will be in music and then it's this one. So what we have to do is add a little sample track. So just left click and the sample area and then just click and drag it in and now it'll bring your sample in which is pretty dope and now basically what we have to do is figure out the tempo at which our beat is going to be which is this is like the thing that's a little bit weird with LMS is that you know whatever tempo your sample is at is the tempo that your beat is going to have to be and that's what I was saying about how you can't change the speed of your you know samples or anything and that you know might be a little bit frustrating but that's why we have audacity to speed it up for us and do that kind of stuff so yeah right here we're going to figure out the tempo and the way we do that is we just kind of adjust the tempo and then the sample will like slide basically so we can bring it down like this and now we can just line it up with this line of the five so drag it to here it seems like it's about 120 yeah because if I drag it any lower it goes like before the end of the fourth bar so we want it to be like perfectly on there and 120 ish seems like that's what it is so yeah 120 is what we're gonna have here and then from that we can now start bringing in some drums to you know put a little beat on top of this all right so we got a few drums going on we got some kicks some 808 some claps some snares some percussion some hi-hats you know the whole nine yards basically and I'm just gonna make a simple little drum pattern before I do anything though I'm going to put a declipper on the master track all right, so I made a simple little clap pattern with these hi-hats that look like this. Just some little rolls and stuff here. And now I'm gonna do some of the percussion and snares and stuff. All right, so I put the percussion in and now it's gonna sound like this. So I like how this is sounding and now I'm going to add some open hi-hats in here. And now finally I'm going to add in the 808 but the 808 is going to be a little bit tricky because with the 808 we have to figure out what the notes of the sample are and kind of match it up with that. So the first thing with the 808 we always got to do is tune it to C. If we know that the 808 sample is C, which I do about this one. And now I'm going to do the amount and now the attack up just a little bit. And we are going to basically just kind of test around a little bit to see what note of the 808 will match up with this sample. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to put the 808 in a separate beat and bassline editor. And then I'm going to turn on this little bow tie thing and just put it to this first bar. And now turn off this and it's just going to play the 808 and the sample over and over. And then I'm going to keep that going. And then while that's going, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to change it as I see fit. So yeah, basically that's my method here for figuring out the 808 note. And then also for figuring out the 808, it's really important that you pitch it up like a lot. So you can do it to like in the sevens or the sixes because you can hear like the actual note that the 808 is playing other than like just bass frequencies, which can be pretty hard to pinpoint, you know, the actual note that it's playing. 
All right, so I finished the 808 pattern here, and it's really simple. It's just E playing over, and then at the end it goes up. And the one thing that I did run into, the one problem that I have, is that the sample is like just slightly short. So if I zoom in like a ton, you can tell that it's cutting off right here, right before the next four bars play. So that's really annoying because I can hear like the little silence. As you can hear, it like sounds choppy, but if I move it up to 123, it's not exactly on beat. So it'll sound like just slightly off. But I think I'm probably just gonna leave it at 123 because I would rather this flow nicely into the next four bars of the sample and be like just slightly off tempo than have that, you know, annoying little space at the end. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it at 123. But that's just one of those things with LMS is that even if the tempo is, you know, like just barely off, it's gonna mess with your stuff a little bit and you can't actually adjust it in the program. So yeah, that's just one of those things that's kind of annoying, but we do just have to deal with it. But anyway, so I have this beat pretty much done now. The only other thing that we have to do is lay it out and then we'll be done with this video basically and you'll notice that I did not really spend a whole lot of time focusing on the drums today because this is more about the actual sampling portion and kind of the way you can chop your sample and then bring it into LMS because you can put whatever drums you wanted to over this you can put some lo-fi drums and make it like a lo-fi sample you can do some trap drums make it a trap beat so yeah I tried to keep this more focused on the actual sampling portion but for now I'm gonna separate these all into their own beat and baseline editors oh and then I'm also gonna add a kick but the kick is just gonna be the exact same pattern as the 808 all right so I just separated everything into its own beat and baseline editor and now the final step of the process is just laying out the beat all right so I just laid out the beat and everything and we're pretty much done with this beat but the one thing that I did add was I added a little bandpass filter here on the sample it looks like this and what I did was I right clicked on the wet and dry and then I went to edit global song automation thingy and then I made it fade out for the first eight bars and then I made it come back in like right around here and then I made it go away for the rest of the song so yeah that's just a little thing that I decided to add in there and that'll keep it you know fresh and not getting too repetitive I think all right so that's gonna do it for me in this video I hope you guys enjoyed this is a video which I've been meaning to make for quite a while now so I'm glad that I finally got around to doing it and I hope you guys are now able to make some fire sample beats inside LMS so yeah make sure you guys check out my Instagram my SoundCloud those will be down in the description below along with playlists of songs I produce my discord beat store all that stuff if you want to go check it out you can and yeah i will see you guys next time Got a lot of fucked up thoughts and stuck inside my dome. Oh, I need to let it in.